I have got a good puzzle for you today. It's me. I'm the puzzle. And you can't solve me. Or can you? All right, so what's popping, everyone? So in this video, I'm going to be discussing should you take the AWS Developer Associate certification first, or as you might have guessed in the title, the Solutions Architect Associate first. So if you don't know who I am, I am Dan Clark. I have um, six. I'm six times certified in AWS. I have the shirt, and this is probably one of my most asked questions. Well, maybe not my most asked, but it's definitely up there and one of my most asked questions in the comment section of what should you do first. I guess people normally ask, should you do certified cloud practitioner? I'll just answer that real quickly. You don't need to. <laughs> and, but the real question is, should you take which one should you take, developer or solution architect associate? And the answer really depends. And I'll go over. I'm going to be discussing some of the options you have with this. All right. Before we begin, get rid of this puzzle thing. Okay. Now, so make sure to triple click that like button for the YouTube algorithm, as it'll help me a lot. So I don't turn into a puzzle piece again. And that that was terrible. Oh my god, my eye was missing. All right. So the number one deciding probably source of information for you to decide which certification you take is, of course the certification page. So I'll link both of these in the description for the Certified Developer Associate and the Solutions Architect Associate. So they give you like all the bunch of knowledge and experience that you'd expect to get. Of course, the exam guide, sample questions like that. And honestly, that's probably the best deciding factor because these are very kind of two different different exams. They have a bunch of different like information that is covered in either of them. And it's good to know, I guess, a good general overview of what the source AWS has to say about it. But of course, I have my opinions because I took both of them. Um, just putting it out there, I took the developer associate first. And then after that, maybe like a couple weeks after that, I don't remember when, I think I put like, I made a video on it like 12 days after it. That's probably whatever, whatever time I put in that video was true for me, anyways. So that's when I took the Solutions Architect Associate after. So this is kind of like a personality test. Like, really depends on your personality and what you want to do and the answer can be different depending on what kind of person you want to be or what kind of person you currently are and I don't know your personality so I can't just give you a straight answer like that and if for the people that say oh I just won't, I'll just take I'll just take both I can't decide I, well yeah I took both but I don't know it's kind of crazy to take both you have to spend like a, another $75 to take the second one because you get 50% off on the second one with the coupon code. As long as you pass the second one, then you have to pay another one. But then there's always the risk that you might fail the second one. And then, I don't know, it, it doesn't seem worth it. So uh, you don't really get gain much for getting two. I mean, you don't get that much from getting one, but it, one, I guess the benefit you get from getting one is probably outweighs the, the cost of getting a second one. So if you just want a general answer, I would say that just simply looking at the recommended knowledge and experience sections from these certifications, like on the page I showed you from AWS before, the developer certification is generally more complex for more, more people and of course, therefore, more hard and should be probably taken second because of that because it covers more in-depth look at AWS and their services. And because of that, if you're only going for one certification, I would recommend to go for the developer certification because you know it has more detail that goes into. So you have to learn more about it. And then all that might not be useful for everyone, but at least it gives you a good idea of what AWS is about and it gives you kind of more hands-on usefulness, I would say. So if you want to do more, I guess, with AWS deployments and maybe management, more on the management side, of course, take the Solutions Architect Associate for certification first. And that, of course, is probably the most highly popular one. It's like my most viewed video of the sort of Solution Architect Associate. Well, my developer associate video like has like negative views. Like people hate that certification for some reason. I think it was a really good one, but oh well. So of course, if you have any experience programming and programming languages, I would take the developer certification first because, you know, developers like the code and that's kind of that's kind of what is useful for that exam. And on the other hand, coding doesn't really help you that much for the Solution Architect Associate. I mean, it's kind of more like, oh, you have an EC2 and you want to set up a VPC and you got to set up the VPC and the EC2 and the, there's not much coding, honestly, for the Solution Architect Associate. Or you don't, there's not coding for any on the exams, really. So yeah, you don't need to code. 
So if you're more interested in the EC2s and the servers in the cloud, take Solutions Architect Associate first. And I would say that's probably the harder like option if you're using AWS though, because servers and EC2s and stuff like that, it's a harder way to do things nowadays. And it's kind of like old fashioned anyways. Like people are moving to serverless, getting away from these servers. So why not just join them? So if you're interested in the really interesting stuff, like the, the APIs, the AWS CLI command line interface, the AWS uh, SDKs, development kits, take the developer first, because that will be really useful if you're interested in those kind of topics. And being interested is kind of like half the battle to getting these certifications. You just have to be a little bit interested so you can study like for a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days, a couple of weeks, I don't know, depending on how much you study, it really matters. So knowledge of these subject matters like AWS CDK, CLI, those, are, those subject matters are really important for the developer associate. So if you're more interested in setting up your networking and your VPCs, Solution Architect is of course going to be better for you. There's not much networking on the developer exam and there's more on the architect exam. So if you're more interested in security, maybe take the developer certification first as you need to know about the shared responsibility model and how much responsibility AWS has while how much responsibility you have in keeping your application secure from the evil hackers like me. <laughs> So if you like looking at the bigger picture of things, like how all the services interact with each other, I would take the Solution Architect Associate first because that gives you a good, a broad image of kind of like the environment that all the services live in. If you're interested in DevOps, which if you did not know what that is, development operations kind of like branded together or DevSecOps, which is de de development security operations all into like one little keyword then of course take developers certification. So yeah, it's just easy as that. However, if you're more interested in like RDS, which is databases and storing data on AWS, take the Solution Architect Associate because that's more of an architect question, not a developer question. If you're more interested in continuous integration or continuous deployment, CICD, take the developer associate exam because you'll have to know all about the CI CD pipelines like code build, code commit, code pipeline, all the code deploy. Those are all very, very important for developer certification, but not for the solution architect associate. It's not even, I don't even think it's needed, honestly. If you want less of a technical role, I'm going to say take solution architect associate first. If you want your job to be like less technical, maybe you don't really care about the technical aspect. You just want to see the, the product get through maybe and you don't really care about like the nitty gritty details, our Solutions Architect Associate is the one to go for that one. And if you want to be involved, this is my opinion here, if you want to be involved in the future of computation in the cloud, I would say the developer cert certification is kind of more, more to go because I believe serverless computing is the way to go in the future. It's much easier to do. You don't have to do all the, you don't have to worry about servers and stuff like that and downtime of servers and like, it's, it's so much easier. All you need to really know and you know how to do is like write, write code to put in like serverless, like Lambda functions or something like that. And they'll just do the rest for you. they will take care of load, no downtime, or at least mostly no downtime. It's really easy serverless. So I think that's why developer associate is in my opinion, the one you should take first. However, if you are interested in the global infrastructure of AWS and AWS's global infrastructure and how that, how that all matters, maybe take the Solution to Architect Associate exam first. On the other hand, if you live in a container and you want to know how to use containers and not, not like container boxes, I'm talking about like software kind of containers, then maybe developer cert is more of the better choice for you. All right, that's all the options I had. I should make a flow chart in this. I wish I uh, made one, but there's there's usually like two deciding options. And if you're more like developer friendly, of course, that's when the name developer, the namesake. If you want to be a developer, <laughs> go for the developer certification. If you want to be like an architect or maybe more on like the business side of things, that's because that's what it really is. That's what solution architects do. They work more in business. They don't do any coding. They kind of work towards a business and how, how to get the goal solved for the business. And I guess developers do that too, but they're more nitty gritty into the actual code and how to implement it and not how to like to design the big picture like Solutions Architects will. Anyways, that is the end of this video. Make sure to like it if you did. Um, subscribe if you have not already. I'm almost at like a thousand subscribers at this point, which, was, which is pretty amazing. 
Um, yeah, and comment down more video ideas if you, if you have any. I post here um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for people that did not know. Anyways, I'll talk to you later. Peace.